uh, my oncologist said that your cancer is so bad that I can't cure you. And she said, I suggest that you uh, get your affairs in order. And basically, when she told me that, it, it basically set off like a starting gun in my mind. I was just bound and determined. And, you know, dying, in, as far as I was concerned, dying was not an option. I live in Southern California in the San Fernando Valley, and I've been here all my life. So I have two daughters, um, and they're, they mean everything to me. My daughters are just like, so awesome. They're, they're, they're they were the, the driving force in my uh, will to live. You know, prior to cancer, I was I was in great shape. I worked out at the gym, you know, four to five times a week, and, and uh, I was really active. I and um, I used to be really into uh, sport fishing and and um, and all that. But you know, when cancer hit, uh, you know, it really affected me uh, physically, not mentally. It actually made me much stronger mentally, but physically. I still deal with things, but I've gotten a lot better. Uh, I was to the point at, at my worst, you know, stage of cancer, I was barely able to walk across the room. Uh, it took me 10 to 15 minutes uh, to walk across the room. It took me half an hour to take a shower. It started one day out of the blue. It was in October of 2020. And it it just happened, literally happened overnight. I, I wasn't, I woke up one morning and I wasn't able to walk. And so my wife took me to the doctor and, and he kind of patched me up to the point where at least I could, you know, move around a little bit. And then that's when I started doing a deep dive into uh, my health and, and everything like that. And um, I knew something was wrong because they don't put you through test after test after test after invasive test after inhumane awful test without a reason i was like thinking to myself man when is this going to end because i mean there was tests mris cat scans biopsies you know you name it and i i went through it what was going through my mind was and I just want to get get some answers, and, um, and and I knew there was no doubt in my mind that there was something really wrong, but I just didn't know what because my oncologist called my wife and I into her office to give us the diagnosis. Uh, my oncologist said that your cancer is so bad that I can't cure you. And she said, I suggest that you uh, get your affairs in order. And so my wife is like, you know, we got to do this. We got to do that. We got to get, you know, these papers done. And I said, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll do it. But basically, I, I was kind of relieved, you know, that the oncologist told me that because I finally knew. Oh, and she also told me, yes, you have stage four prostate, bone and lung cancer. And uh, so I said, I said, OK. Uh, and, and by that time, I had been preparing my mind uh, for a while because of all these tests. And, and so uh, I, I basically in my mind, I knew something was really wrong. I didn't know what. But by the time she gave it to the, gave me the diagnosis, 
you know, I was mentally, I was ready for it. And, and basically when she told me that, it, it basically set off like a starting gun in my mind. Um, because, you know, I, I respect my oncologist, but I wasn't about to buy into what she was telling me. I didn't know how I was going to do it, but there was no doubt in my mind that somehow, some way, I was going to figure out how to live. I've been to, yes, a no, quite a number of uh, doctors, but the main person that, that I've been involved with is my oncologist, who she, she, she and I uh, started off with a very contentious relationship. What I did always did was, you know, you you have an appointment with your oncologist, and it lasts fifteen minutes. And I'd always bring a notebook in and a pep and a pen uh, to write things down. And so she said she would say, "Oh, we're going to do this, or you know, we're going to do that." And and so if it if it was you know involved medication or anything like that, I would write it down and and I would go research it. And I tell her that I said, "Well, uh, you know, what do you want to do?" And and I'd want the names of everything and you know. For instance, I wanted the exact name of the type of chemotherapy that she wanted to administer. And so, yeah, I got the name of it, researched it, and found out, you know, all about it pretty much, you know, that it's it's a type of chemotherapy that's been around for a while. And so, you know, it basically, you know, was was as safe as, as a chemotherapy can be as opposed to uh, ones that were, you know, some of them, the chemotherapy in their description was, hey, this can kill you. And so I wasn't going to have any part of anything like that. And so one day I went into my oncologist and she was just so mad at me. I, I, I think she wasn't having a good day or anything. And, and I didn't make it any better. And so she, she said, steam was coming out of her ears and she says why don't you just do what i tell you to do and i and i i was just real calm and real quiet and i just said because i want to know exactly what you want to do and what it's going to do and uh you know so basically since that time she's i've been on time or early to every single appointment I've made every single hospital visit, every single test. And, and so she, over time, she realized that, that how serious I was about living. And now, in fact, she wanted me to get on this medication. And, and I said, you know, I don't really want to do that. And she looked at me and thinking, here we go again. <laughs> and I told her, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll make you a deal. If things go south and, and the ne necessity arises that I need to take it, then, then I'll take it, you know, but I don't want to take anything just to take something. And she goes, okay, that's fair. That's fair. I respect tremendously, you know, doctors, my oncologists and everything like that, but I only... I give them respect. They they do know what they're doing with what they have in front of them. To me, 15 minutes, that, which is the treatment time that most uh, patients receive, is not enough time to get to know that person. So one of the main things when a person gets a diagnosis is does that oncologist really know the makeup of that person? Does that oncologist know what how that person is going to react? Uh, my oncologist has come to know me over time, but at first it, it was just like, you know, pretty much it was just basically telling me, shut up and get in line. And I wasn't having that. Uh, I respect what she's 
has said, but I wasn't buying it as, you know, me. That's not me. When I started my journey, once I got my diagnosis, I treated my cancer probably 50% conventional and 50% alternative, natural. And for me, and, and again, I, I stress that this is what I did because this is what I wanted. For me, the chemotherapy uh, played an important part in the fact that I needed to stop the rapid growth because it, it was in so many areas. You know, it was in my prostate, it was in my bones, it was in my lungs, and probably, you know, other places too. So because the cancer was spreading so rapidly, uh, I decided to go. I didn't want to, but I decided to do the uh, six rounds of chemotherapy. I mean, I, it took a lot for me to do that because I'm really familiar, uh, you know, with uh, the effects of chemotherapy and, and things like that. It, it's non-discriminate. It goes after not only the cancer cells, but it goes after the good cells too. So the first round that I took, I got so sick. I was sick for four days and, and it was like, like being on a high that just wouldn't go away. You know, you couldn't sleep it off. You'd wake up and you'd feel just as bad or worse. And, and, and so I called up the guy at the lab and I said, man, if I get that sick again on round two, there's just no way I, I'm going to keep doing this. It's just miserable from rounds two through six. I was fine. I, you know, my hair, parts of my hair did fall out, but as far as the effects of feeling the chemotherapy, you know, it, it was, I was fine. So that was good. And in the meantime, what I was doing, I was changing everything about my diet, you know, and, and, and so I was working that along with what I was doing with the chemotherapy. And so very good friend of mine he's a nutritionist and up until this particular time i was a vegan and i thought man i have the greatest diet and all this kind of stuff and he said to me he said to me that i'm going to give you a diet and he said i would suggest you follow it because if you do then I think you'll be around in a year. But if you don't, I, I, I don't know what's going to happen to you. So that was a major, major thing for me to radically change everything about my diet. Because I hear I'm thinking, um, you know, I'm a vegan and, and uh, you know, I, I'm healthy and all this kind of stuff. But why, if, if it's that healthy for me, why do I have so much cancer? So I pondered that for the longest time. But, you know, when your back's against the wall and my back was, I had to make some changes and radical changes. And so I said, okay, give me the diet and I'll follow it. And to this day, I still follow it. And, and so what he gave me, uh, you know, I added uh, wild salmon, I added organic chicken, organic turkey, and organic beef. Uh, and then I changed, you know, some of the other things as well. Um, and and I, mean, I, do, I do a lot with my diet. It's very, very complex. But in my opinion, that is what has saved my life. And that's why I'm around today. I did the six rounds of chemo and uh, I started implementing my, my diet. And what I've done is I've treated my whole being. So, you know, not only the physical, but also the mental as well. And so I was working with um, a hypnotherapist from Cyprus. 
And so she helped me a lot and, and taught me a lot of things that I had no idea about of working with the subconscious mind. And I didn't know when I started what was going to happen. Uh, but I put in my mind that, you know, there, if there was any way possible on this earth, I was going to live. I mean, there was just dying. I was just, you know, I look at the obituaries, you know, I glance through them every day. And I said, there's no way my name is going to be there. No way. When I started my cancer journey, uh, my PSA for my prostate, which is the marker for prostate cancer, uh, my number on the PSA was almost a thousand. And my oncologist said she had never seen anything remotely that high. And so what I basically did was I targeted uh, the three main areas of my cancer, my prostate, my bone and my lungs. So as far as my prostate goes now, my prostate, my PSA is down to 0.6 from almost a thousand. And, and then my lung cancer, I saw an actual uh, scan of my lungs, you know, and, and they're supposed to be two white, you know, uh, entities and these two white entities had black blobs floating through all of it and, and that's the way I started my uh, lung cancer journey and so I've taken um, some things that uh, have really really helped my lungs uh, are, are doing much better I, I don't know exactly where they're at but compared to, to when we started they're, they're to like light years better and the same thing with my bones. I, I still have uh, some cancer in my bones, but uh, the metastases has stopped and uh, things have gotten much better. Um, I haven't used any uh, prescription meds for pain at all through this whole journey. And I, and I do uh, uh, CBD and, and, and other things as well. I mean, I do take uh, an injection for bones um, you know, once every three months and then another monthly injection for, um, for my, for my lungs as well. But that, that's about it. You know, pretty much it's, um, uh, I, I do it with my diet and my supplements and, and, um, uh, you know, my mental exercises and, and things like that. And so, yeah, that, that's what I do. It's worked for me. I'm not saying it's going to work for anybody else, but um, for me, it's 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 been incredible. For me, I wouldn't wish cancer on anyone, but cancer has changed my life for the better. I mean, it, it's just opened my eyes to so many things, and, and I appreciate things that I just took for granted. You know, I, I took for granted uh, so many things. You know, I used to walk out my front door and it was like, didn't even think about anything. Uh, I was in, in 2021, I did not leave my room for three months. Uh, just was in my room because I, I physically couldn't, you know, the very first time that I came down from my room after being in, in my room for three months, and I opened up my front door, I mean, it was glorious. It, it was awesome. I, I mean, just to, you know, when you haven't seen the sun for three months, uh, it's in, I mean, I, it's indescribable, absolutely indescribable. The sky was bluer. The trees were, leaves were greener. Uh, the birds were chirping loudly. I mean, I just took everything in, you know, and. You know, you just notice and, and appreciate things so much more. If you get diagnosed, you, you know, whatever you're afflicted with, whether it's heart disease or cancer or, or autoimmune disease or whatever it is, you know, the journeys are different, 
but in a lot of ways they're the same because in order to get better uh, the mind is so critical and and believing and uh actually really believing that uh, you can get better because if you don't believe that you can get better nobody else is going to believe that you know you, it's your life you know when you go to the doctor and they tell you you have six months to live they they, they are concerned about you i'm sure but who's going to care more about your life you or your doctor it's you and, and so that right there should tell you that it's on you to do everything that you can uh, to find the answers so that you can, you know, live, keep living your life and, and, and making a great life. I mean, I, I'm, I'm just so, so happy every single day, you know, and I, I'm so fortunate to meet so many incredible people and at this point, you know, there, there's no doubt in my mind I'm going to be around for a while, you know, and and, and in fact, we had talked about my uh, daughter's wedding earlier back, it was back in October, and, and I was just looking out and reflecting, you know, I, I just reflected, these are the days that I wanted to be around for.